Hey everybody, this is Jeffrey. Uh, as a companion to Sid Hearth's tutorial today, I wanted to give you a quick visual rundown of creating a short code. So let's go into an editor. And here we have the base install of WordPress. So we're going to go into WP Content. And you could place short codes within a plugin file if you wanted to, and then you could activate it. But more common is you'll place it within your functions.php file. So here is the base theme for WordPress 2010. Uh, you would put it in your functions.php file, but they have this filled up, so why don't we keep it clean? And we'll include something called short codes.php. That way we have an empty file that we can work on and it won't be too confusing. So we'll go ahead and add that short codes.php. Now, the first thing you need to do is add short code. This is a a WordPress function that allows you to assign a key that will trigger the function and the function that it should run. So for example, first, let's say that our short code is going to be say hello, okay? Now that's going to trigger a function. So first we're gonna do it the traditional way and then we'll use an anonymous function as of uh, PHP 5.3, we can use anonymous functions. So we'll say say hello. You can name them the same. Sidharth recommends that in his tutorial, that's fine. And let's go ahead and write the function now. Function say hello. And here all we're gonna do is, well first let's echo it and see what happens there. And we'll do hello. All right, so that should be fine. Of course we need to wrap this within a PHP tag. Or because it's only PHP, no need for a closing tag. All right, we call the function add short code. We give it a key. So what this key allows us to do is within your post panel, you can write something like say hello. And when you write that, this will be the key and that will trigger the function say hello. And then subsequently it'll echo hello world. So we've got this within functions.php, we're including it. So we should be all set to go. All right, come back, go into our panel. And one thing worth noting is that uh, you need to add your short code within HTML mode. All right, so we called this say hello, is that right? So I'll update it, come back, and if I refresh the page, sure enough, we get hello. So that's as simple as it is adding a short code, but you can do more with it. So let's go back into Coda, and we're gonna do something maybe a little more practical. Uh, let's say on NetTouch, you know, when we have the video tutorials, they're wrapped within a box, and we have a an embed with a custom path and stuff like that. So we're gonna shorten that. We'll call it video embed. Now, uh, before we get into this, I wanna show you one quick thing is as of PHP 5.3, uh, you can use anonymous functions. So this is really helpful for WordPress things. Like in this case, we're creating a function, but it's not gonna be reused ever. It's really only gonna be used that one time. So it's a shame to have to create this variable or this name if we don't need to. So if you want, as of 5.3, you can just do it like that, just like you might do uh, with, with jQuery or JavaScript or something like that. Add a short code, say hello, and that's gonna be equal to an anonymous function. Like that, pretty simple. Now that's still gonna work, so let's go back and verify that it does work. Refresh a couple times, yeah, that does work. However, a couple of things you need to be aware of. If you're doing this and you're building a theme, that then means that the, the short code is dependent upon PHP 5.3 being active. So if you're building this maybe for your own site or your company's site or, or a blog for a client, that's fine because you can control the version of PHP. But if you're selling the theme, maybe on ThemeForest, maybe have a think on that whether you want to force PHP 5.3 or not. It's up to you. But nonetheless, it's not used very much and it's uh, very helpful. All right, so now we're gonna change our short code and we're gonna call it video embed. And that's gonna be equal to a function. So uh, first, let's just return. Uh, we're gonna re return the basic HTML structure here. So it's gonna be div class tutorial image. This is how we format on NetTouch is we wrap the embed within a div and then provides like a border and a background and stuff like that. And then we need the embed code. So let's go ahead and grab that. Okay, so I've accessed one of the postings, one of the videos, and here's the embed code. So you could, and what we normally do is just copy and paste that, but we're gonna shorten it, come back into Coda, and we're gonna paste that in. 
So now you have that whole embed source code. And we're also going to update it to the parameters that we need and what I record at, which is 1280 by 720, which reduces the 600 by 338. All right, so let's just try that itself and see how that works. Now, of course, we need to go back and update this to video embed because that's the name of our short code. And sure enough, we are getting the video. So that itself is helpful. Now here, I don't have any specific styling for that wrapping image, but we can add that if you want. Tutorial image, background is E3, and we'll say a border of one pixel solid, CB. And then we'll make sure that we align everything to the center and provide 15 pixels worth of padding on the top and bottom and on the left and right. Yeah, okay, that'll be just fine for now. Make sure we get rid of that as well. Okay, so now we've already shortened this down to add this big chunk of code. We've shortened it to video embed, but we can take that a little further because with every new posting, there's going to be a new video tutorial to embed, correct? Okay, well, why don't we turn that into attributes? That way, I can do something like source equals, and then I can come back, and I can just copy and paste the source that I need. In this case, something like that. All right, so how can we take this? And also, while we're at it, we should maybe also add an option for a width and an option for a height if we want, though we'll use a base structure so that we don't have to write all that code if we don't need to. But that alone, you can add as many attributes as you want and it's still going to work. So now let's go and add support for those. Well, functions, we're now passing attributes to it. So these attributes are going to be represented, uh, we'll call it ATTS, that's pretty common. Now, we need to have the base of values. So let's go ahead and create that. For now, I'm gonna write it as an array. And the first one is source, and that's gonna be equal to nothing. They will, that's required that they add a source. The next one will be a width. That will default to say 600. And next we'll have a height, and that'll default to 338. And then finally, we'll have a title maybe, that one will help as well, and that'll be the little caption. And that'll be empty by default as well. Okay, so how can we say, take the attributes, and remember, this right here is going to be equal to these right here, source, width, 600, height. So how can we say, okay, take what they pass in, and if they pass in anything here, override what we have and use theirs. It's very, if you've ever built uh, maybe a jQuery plugin, it's the same thing, using jQuery extend to uh, extend an array and add the new values. So we can do this, and we say attributes, and we're going to override it. And we can use a WordPress function called shortcode apps. And what that's going to accept is two parameters. First, it's going to accept the array. So why don't we clean this up a little bit? Okay, it's going to accept the array, and then it's also going to accept the value to compare it against. So we'll do that. So take our array, and then take whatever they write in, and override the values that we have here. So now if it helps, why don't we print our attributes and test that out. Refresh, double arrow on line six. Let's come back, and six. Yeah, sorry, that doesn't need to be a variable, of course. All right, so now you're going to get array source, and that's equal to what we passed in. Width 600, height is 338, title is blank. So let's test this out, and don't worry about that right now. Go ahead and get rid of these right here. Update the posting. Now if I refresh, you'll see that even though we've removed everything, we're still using the defaults. But if we come back and we override it, width equals 300. Refresh. Now we're using that value. So that's all short code attributes does, is it allows us to override it. All right, so let's come back and for the time being, get rid of that. Go into Coda and we're gonna get rid of that print R call. So now we need to grab these values and you have a, a couple options for doing so. One of them is in Siddharth's tutorial, he uses extract. And what extract allows you to do is it'll accept an array and then it'll allow you to use each of those items within the array as a variable. It's very helpful. In this case though, I don't think it's necessary for this particular short code. All we'll do here is replace it. So source, and then we'll append at source, and that's it. Uh, let's come back to width, paste that in, and we'll do the last one for height. Now we should also add 
We should also add that caption. So we can place it uh, within here, and we'll say h, maybe an h4 tag, and that will be, what will we call this, ATTS title. And we could even take this further and say, if a title does not exist, then we'll, we won't show it. But for now, let's save that. Or we could even make the default to the video, <laughs> something lame like that. All right, so we have this, we have the defaults, and if you want, we can view the page source, and let's go down to the embed code, and this is what is adding. So the short code, it's just like a, a function call that'll echo the, some of this stuff out. So it looks like I have width set to 300, and that's because we need to refresh. There we go. And now if I refresh, you'll see those values have been passed in. So now let's override that title. And we'll say title equals uh, convert a warm, cheerful web design to HTML and CSS. All right, save that, come back. And if we refresh the page, now that's taking effect. And if we just want to clean that up pretty quickly, tutorial image h4, font weight is bold, margin is zero. Why don't we inspect the element like this has anything to do with the tutorial, but so we can see if we click here, let's go up and H4 is taking up some extra space. Maybe it's padding. Nope, margin bottom, that's still taking effect, which means that we don't have enough weight here, doesn't it? So let's just be really sloppy right here because it has nothing to do with the tutorial. Oh, by the way, did you know that within WebKit, you can hit F1 and it'll bring up a panel for you? I learned that on Twitter the other day. Come back, refresh, yeah, and that's fine. All right, so that's how you do it. So for the final run through, you, within your functions.php file, or you can have uh, an a external file that you include, you add a short code, you give it a key, and that key is what you use to reference it, like so. Then you make that equal to either a function. So you would either make all of this its own function and then you would reference it. Or if you're using 5.3 or higher, you can use an anonymous function. So you allow the attributes and that is what the user passes in within here. Now you want to take what they have and override your defaults. So you use shortcode attributes and you pass in your array and that's the defaults, and then you take whatever they pass in and overwrite that. And then we write that all back to the attributes array, so that creates a new array for us. Then here, all we're doing is we embed this, so if it's easier to read, why don't we take all of this and put them onto their own line so we can read it better. And then we have the H4, and all we're doing is we're just pasting in these values. So normally, if you're doing something like this, you would have to write this code yourself. You'd have to paste in the embed code, update the height and width, add a title, et cetera, et cetera. And now, with this method, you only have to write a handful of characters, and it'll do that for you. So once again, refresh the page. And there we go. So to dig deeper and to learn how to add these to even your toolbar, be sure to read the rest of Sid Hearth's tutorial. I'll see you guys later, guys. I'm Jeffrey Wade. Bye-bye.